they're good looking. If you're over the age of 40, you need to do this workout. In this workout, we're going to focus on strengthening the muscles of the feet as well as increasing the mobility. You see, as we age, our feet tend to get weak and the mobility decreases in the ankle and the toe joints. And this can cause everything from bunions, plantar fasciitis, pain in the ankle, knee, hips, and even in the low back. Now for this workout, you don't need any tools except a chair and a rubber band. So I grabbed one that I had on my asparagus. And as I said, we're going to train everything related to the foot, but also include the legs, the core, the glutes, as well as the upper body, because I want to train it all while we target into the foot. And if you haven't already, and if you're a woman over the age of 40, oh my goodness, I would love to keep working with you. Simply click subscribe, click the notification bell, and let's continue doing this as a team, baby. All right. Grab your rubber band, grab your chair, and let's go get warmed up. Hello there, hey, welcome. I'm PJ from fitnesswithpj.com, and for 25 years now, I've been helping women over the age of 40 feel better, get stronger and get in the best shape of their lives. So this is super awesome you joined me. Now listen, we're gonna jump right into the warm up. As we do, I'll chat about the workout. But first things first, I want you to take your shoes and socks off, okay? It's important that we have no footwear on for this workout because we want the muscles of the feet fired right up and unfortunately, our shoes are pretty comfy cozy, not allowing us to kick in all those muscles that we want to train so that we can avoid things like bunions, plantar fasciitis, and other pain and discomfort. So, shoes are off? Yes? Excellent. Okay, let's start with some room behind us. A couple of breaths here before we get busy. Feet are hip width apart. Now, open up the feet as wide as you can. Spread those toes. Good. Soften the knees. Give me an inhale. Bring the arms up. Exhale, float the arms down. Excellent. Ground yourself with the feet. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. Last one. Inhale, slight knee bend. Exhale. Step back a good stride with the left leg, front knee and ankle in line. Inhale the arms up, and as you do, drop that back knee down into a lunge. Exhale, press yourself up, straighten both legs. Arms stay up, shoulders away from the earlobes. Let's do that again. Inhale, come down into that lunge pattern. Exhale, push through the ground and come up again. Now, if you have sensitive knees, just don't go down as deep. When you come down, you want that ankle and knee aligned on that front leg. Last three, stretching the back foot, the muscles of the back foot, two more, last one, good, bring the arms down by your side, bring this back leg in enough so that you can plant the heel to the ground, bend this front knee so you're still in a bit of a lunge pattern, excellent. And then rotate this foot, this back foot on a 45 and bring the arms out level with your ground. So if you're familiar with yoga, this is a warrior pose. Front knee, is it tracking with the toes? Yes, good job. And from this position, straighten that front leg. Slide your hand forward like you're trying to tap someone on the shoulder slightly in front of you. And then windmill the arms down. Step back into a high lunge. Right forearm comes to the ground as best you can. If you need to roll on the outside edge of that front leg, go for it. And then up and rotate. Let's do that again. Come down. Good. Come on to that right outside edge of the foot. Rotate. Follow your gaze with your hands. Front knee and ankle are aligned when we're into that lunge position right here. One more. And step it forward, feet hip width apart, come on up. So the other leg, right leg steps back, inhale, arms up, 
Exhale, float down into lunge. Inhale, press up. Good. So use your breath at what feels best for you. Last two. And one. Bring that back foot in a little bit. I'm just going to rotate. Don't you move. So that you can get the heel on the ground. Good job. Feel a bit of a stretch. Now turn it on to a 45. Arms out, level with your ground. Front knee is bent, lined up with the ankle. Toes and ankles straight ahead. Now straighten that front leg. Slide your body forward. Again, like you're going to tap someone on the shoulder. And then windmill the arms down. Come into that high type lunge position, supported on the hands. Outside edge of that front leg as you bring that left forearm to ground and then rotate and look up. Good. Left forearm to ground, rotate up. So we're actually doing a lot more mobility from the foot all the way up into the spine, into the shoulders, into the hips even. So you're getting the full meal deal with this one today. One more, please. Excellent. Step it forward and up. All right, last drill to get deep into the ankle joint. And ankles are really important if you exercise because the mobility of your ankle depends upon how good your squat pattern is. Let's take that right leg, okay? We want the foot and the um, heel all in a straight line. As I drive my knee forward, I'm going to come off of my heel and let my knee touch the ground. So hopefully you can see that. I'll go this direction. Try it with me. So foot slightly in front, ankle and knee aligned. Now drive the knee forward, hands on the ground to support you. Get that right knee to the ground, toes stay on the ground, and then drive up. So there's a really big stretch through the bottoms of our foot, and then also working into the mobility of the ankle. Now obviously with all my workouts, if anything hurts, if it doesn't feel right, please don't do it, okay? Or if your physio or physician has told you to do something otherwise, Please follow their advice. One more. Excellent. Okay, let's do the other leg. So again, we're trying to get some really deep flexion into the ankle joint while we extend through the toes. Here we go, ready? Plant the foot. Now drive that knee forward. We keep the toes on the ground and we'll see if we can get the knee to the ground. Good. And you may find one side tighter than the other. That's quite normal, actually. So we'll try to work all that out as we work out, right? We want to build on our weaknesses. Two more. Last one. And come on up. All right, hopefully the ankles are warm, the foot feels pretty warm. We're gonna move into our first series of movements. Again though, yes, this is a foot strengthening workout, but we are going to hit everything in the body as I mentioned in the intro. Okay, on our first circuit, we have four different movement patterns. Three rounds, 50 seconds are on the clock. We're starting out with a one-legged squat, and this is a great exercise to get into the thighs and hips, but when we do it without our shoes, we're also working the muscles of our feet, trying to hold the balance. So we'll start with the right leg, so you, you won't mirror me, and come down into the squat. And then from there, I'm gonna cue you how you can intensify it to challenge your balance, not necessarily your thighs. So if you have a hard time with balance, I want you to grab your chair, maybe have that beside you, or position yourself by a wall. All right, here we go. Spread the toes of that right foot. So you're gripping, you're using the muscles of the foot to ground you here. Now push the bum back, knee tracks with the toes, and then come on up. Great. Push the bum back, come on up. Now as you come down, I want you to stay down here and see if you can take that non-weight bearing leg out, but don't touch the ground, and then bring it in and press up. So we call that leg abduction, working into the hip here, but we're also really trying to throw our balance off by throwing our leg away from our body. Good. So if you're having a hard time with balance, this would be something that you would work towards. Focus your stare on something stationary. 
Again, we're trying to keep this left foot wah, off the ground. I had to tap mine down. That's what I get for looking around. <laughs> when the timer goes right there, we do the other leg. Now, FYI, same as mobility that we found in the warm-up drill, you may find strength that you have a more dominant side. So this could be easier or it could be a little harder. Here we go. Start with the squat. Good. And then press up. So get a feel for the movement. Neutral spine, get a feel for your form. And then by all means, now we can add that leg abduction if we want. So down, away, and in. Good. So now my right's not going to touch the ground. All it's trying to do is throw me off balance and make my left foot, ankle, everything up the kinetic chain, work harder to stay grounded and rooted here. I feel this more so on this foot than I do my other foot. Time. Legs out wide now, wider than the shoulders, toes are turned out. Sinking into a deep squat, so why don't you follow me and I'll talk you through the movement. So sink down for me, stay here, knees track with the toes, you may need to go a little wider. Now lift up off the heels and drive yourself up and drop the heels down, okay? So here we go, squat, lift the heels, drive up and down. This is gonna challenge your balance as well, so focus your stare on something stationary, that's probably not me, right? <laughs> Knees track with the toes. Good. So really working the muscles into the feet, into the ankles here. Mobility of the toe joints. Woo, we got a lot going on. And we don't need any special tools to get it done. How cool is that? Take a peek, make sure those knees are tracking with your toes. Time. All right, let's get down into a high plank position. Wrists under shoulders, feet hip width apart. Do your best if you have sensitive shoulders or wrists. Now from here, push your hips up into downward dog. See if you can get your heels to the ground. Good, now float back to high plank. You can hold here for a breath or join me and take the right hand and tap the left shoulder. Then the left hand and tap the right shoulder. And then back to downward dog. So trying to lengthen the back of the body and then we float into high plank to work into the core muscles. We're balancing on one arm if you're joining me on that, working into the shoulders, arms, a lot happening here. So take it slow. Again, do your best, right? That's all I ask. When the timer goes, we take it back to the top, right leg squat. time. Here we go. Right foot. All right. Whether or not you want to abduct this left leg out is up to you. Here we go. Bum goes back. You can abduct it out, bring it in and drive up. So you'll feel a lot of glute on this as well. But there is a ton of good things happening in this right foot right now. So whether you have bunions, plantar fasciitis, or any type of other foot problems or issue, or you're just here to prevent it, moving forward, I want to make sure that you also have <laughs> good fitting footwear. So don't try to jam your poor feet in those pointy high heel shoes. Trust me, a pair of Nikes looks way sexier. <laughs> Time. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Can quote me on that. Other leg. <laughs> Ready? Squat. And if you like, add that leg abduction. Good. I know, it's easy for me to say, right? This is what I do for a living. I don't need to put on high heels. You may need to for your job. So as soon as you can, though, take those babies off because <laughs> they are wrecking your foot, wrecking your pelvis, wrecking your low back. And if you don't feel it today, you will.
This might be an unusual experience for you working in bare feet too. Time. So I hope that you're feeling all those muscles fire up in your foot that otherwise your runners support you for, which is good for a high impact and what have you. Here we go, sumo squat and heel raise. But we also need to strengthen the muscles of the feet. So that's why barefoot running became quite a craze. So there is some decent research around that. I do um, barefoot treadmill walking and running. I don't want calluses on my feet, so I don't go outside with bare feet. <laughs> it's just a girl thing for me, but I do do it on the treadmill. I've trained too many people with plantar fasciitis, bunions, and it's painful. It is slow healing. And if it's bunions, the surgery is very invasive. So I don't want that. So preventative time. All right, high plank. Again, do your best. If you need to take breaks for the wrists or shoulders, go for it. But see if you can get two or three of these in with me. High plank. Now, if you'd like, you can hold for a breath or join me and tap opposite shoulders, keeping those hips squared. Now press the hips back. Can you get the heels to the ground? I can't. I'm just encouraging you to. So if you can't, don't think, oh my goodness, I'm doing it wrong. You're not. <laughs> I'm inches away from my floor myself. Now ensure that the feet are hip width apart and the ankles and the toes are in a straight line. When you go into that downward dog, your ears are in between your biceps. Head is relaxed. Wrists are under the shoulders in high plank. Fingers are spread. Time. All right, last round, and then we'll move on. Okay, so back to that right foot. And take a look, we want everything in alignment. The hip, the knee, the foot. Squat down, add that leg abduction if you want to, drive up. For me, a foot injury would be devastating. I could work around a knee injury, hip, shoulder, but a foot injury would be devastating because I love to walk, I love to move. So again, if you don't have anything, bravo. If you're like me, then we need to keep this up as a preventative way so we don't get type of injuries. If you do have time, other leg, bunions, plantar fasciitis, then we need to learn from what created that, stay away from what created it, and then add movement patterns like this. Squat. I've sprained my ankle a few times in my life. Broke my ankle when I was a child, but as an adult, sprained it, and that sucked. <laughs> Now make sure you stay to the very end for me, okay? I've got a really cool ab routine that we're going to do. I know, nothing to do with our foot, but like I told you, <laughs> I wanted to train everything. Time. Sumo squat to heel raises. I've got you here. You push play, so I want to deliver everything for you. Here we go. Give me a squat. Knees track with toes. Go down low, okay? We want thighs at least parallel to your ground. Now come up off of the heels. Push up and release. Good. Down. Heel lift, press up, release. Focus your eyes on something stationary to help with your balance. Excellent. Chest stays lifted, shoulders relax, ears over the shoulders. Breathe. Last few.
time. Okay, final set of plank to downward dog. So maybe you did three last time. See if you can do four, or maybe you didn't do the shoulder tap. Let's see if you can join me on the shoulder tap. Feet hip width apart, stable plank, tap the shoulders, hips stay quiet. Now press through those hands, lift the hips up, head goes in between the arms, and back to high plank. So we're flowing through this very slow. We want to think stability and strength on this movement, okay? Not fast, trying to get the heart rate up. Time, nicely done. All right, grab a sip of water if you need it. Next series of moves, we want that chair and that rubber band. At time of filming right now, we're having a mini heat wave where I live, which is really unusual. I live in Vancouver, BC. We don't get a lot of heat waves. <laughs> so it's cooking right now. All right, this is super cool movement we're gonna do using a rubber band. And this is really specific for those of you with bunions or a preventative measure for bunions. Let's take that band, place it around the big toes for me, about mid joint, so. Now step the feet out until you feel some good resistance. And if you've got a rubber band, it's not gonna take much. Plant the feet on the ground. Try to keep the feet in a straight line. Beautiful. Ankles are underneath your knees. Need to change my timer. Just hold here for a second and you're gonna feel some resistance on this band. Now, from here, keep the heels on the ground. I want you just to lift all the toes off the ground. So the foot stays on, toes lift off. You there, you with me? Perfect. Now lower down and do it again. Lift just the toes. So what we've done here is created a resistance laterally for your toe, strengthening the muscles that help give us some arch support. Arch support disappears with age. It's just gravity, thank you very much. One of many things that disappear as we get older, but we can regain it, okay? <laughs> All right, now I want you to stay here, okay? and scrunch your toes in like you're a monkey and just hold. And you may even need to separate the band a bit more, but what we're doing here is creating more arch lift with this isometric arch lift hold. Anyways, I may not be able to, you know, you may have lost your mind years ago. I can't give that back to you, but I can give the rest of the muscles, including a lifted arch back. Now when the timer goes, we're switching up the toe lift thing a bit, just a heads up. All right, now lift all the toes up again. Foot stays on the ground, so the ball of my foot's pressing into the mat and maybe press it in a little harder. Now, here's sort of left brain, right brain. I want you to just drop the big toes and touch the ground, and then lift. Just the big toes, the other little digits, they stay lifted. So just the big toe comes down and taps. And you'll find one side easier to do than the other. You may find the toes come down, you just can't stop it, that's fine. Do your best by just isolating that big toe. Time, all right, now let's go back to that arch lift. So I want you to flatten the foot on the ground. Now try to grip the ground with your toes and you'll feel the arch lift right away, it's quite cool. And let's just hold. Now, if you need more resistance on the toes, then by all means, step the feet out. We have one more round, and then we'll move on. But I can really feel the bottoms of my feet, and obviously my toes. You can drop me a comment after this workout and let me know what you thought of this one. All right, now lift all the toes up again. So 
the mound of the foot stay on the ground. Now keep the big toe lifted and just drop the other four to the ground. Oh, that one's so hard. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'm really good with my right leg, but my left toes, just, they just don't get it. <laughs> Again, do your best, do your best. I know, you never thought when you turned on a YouTube workout you'd be doing this, did you? <laughs> Welcome to Fitness with PJ. But this is good stuff, we need this, okay? Yes, we need to lift weights and sweat and breathe hard and you know, burn the muscles, but we also need this. All right, now tuck the toes in, lift the arch, final time, and then we'll take this rubber band off. Last 30 seconds. See if you can lift the arches up off your ground a bit more. And you do that by pressing your big toe into the mat, into your ground. And feel that arch lift. Time. Oh, let's take that band off. Oh, those poor little toes. Okay, we're going to just get into um, some big toe figure eights to get the mobility of your toe joint, and then we continue on. So I want you to take your left toe and create big figure eights with your hand. So your hand is guiding that left toe to the figure eight. And you can also cross the ankle over here and just hold on to the ankle with your other hand so you're not moving your foot. We just want to isolate into the toe. Mine is just cracking away. Actually, I'm kind of disgusted in myself. I don't have a lot of toe mobility. So I need to do more of this. If you do a lot of yoga, you probably have really good toe mobility. Bravo. Bravo, you yoga people. <laughs> All right, let's do the other toe. Again, anchor the ankle with the left hand so that that foot doesn't move. And then figure eight. I don't even know what an eight looks like with this toe. I'm so uncoordinated on this side. There we go. I don't know about you, my eights are kind of looking like ones, but <laughs> again, you just do your best, okay? And release. All right, take your chair. We want the back of the chair. So if your chair didn't have a backing, position yourself close to a wall. Heel rocks is our next drill. If you've ever had plantar fasciitis, you're probably very familiar with this. Keeping the legs straight, pull the toes off of the ground, okay, and then lift up off of the heels. So we're just rocking back and forth. One of each is one rep, okay? Here we go, legs straight, pull the toes up. And try to pull the toes up, not by pushing your bum back, okay? We want it to come through the ankle joint. Yeah, no, I know that trick. <laughs> Here we go. Pull the toes up and then lift up off the heel. One. We have 15. Here's two. This is also really good if you are prone to shin splints. So shin splints quite often, it's the toe pulling, okay? The anterior tibialis muscle is weak. So pulling the toe up like so helps strengthen that. Come up high off of those heels, giving me your best ballerina. I don't know, I lost count, so let's say three more. Three, it's an old straight trainer standby. Two, and one. All right, before we do a second set of that, let's just stretch your left leg. So start with the left heel. You want the heel and the foot in a straight line. Hold on to your chair. Press your hips forward, back leg is straight, getting a pull into the calf. This is also a really good thing to do if you are prone to uh, shin splints as well. Couple more breaths. I don't know if you can hear my dogs. They're going crazy in the backyard. And release. Okay, let's do a second set and then we'll stretch the right side. 
feet hip width apart, and you want everything straight down the highway. So let's start in good alignment so we strengthen in good alignment. Lift the toes up as much of the foot off you as you can, and then lift the heels up. There's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, my dogs are uh, being very vocal about something. Seven, eight, nine, ten, last five, four, three, two, one more of each. Beautiful right side stretch. Step back, now take a look, because again, I've been doing this just a few years, <laughs> 25 years to be exact. Most people will toe out, all right? I want you to almost feel like you're pigeon-toed, and that's gonna get us a better stretch in your calf. Back leg straight, press the hips forward. And then from there, you can even intensify the stretch by trying to push your back of the knee, back of the knee behind you. So you're really trying to push the back knee to the wall behind you. A couple more breaths. And release. Okay, we're moving into that fun ab drill that I was telling you about. The first exercise is foot specific, so I did throw in some good stuff for the feet. But uh, yeah, we're essentially gonna be working our core in a ladder style workout. So let's head down to the mat and let's begin. Okay, we've got a ladder style. So that means we start with 25 reps and then we ladder down our reps by five until we get to five reps. Let me quickly demo the moves for you and then we will get going. The first one is into four points, so wrists under shoulders. Okay, tuck the back toes under and then from there we press up to downward dog. There's one, come back down to four point, up to downward dog, there's two. To modify, you could have your hands elevated. You could also go on your forearms, okay? If you find that being on your hands aggravates your wrists. From there, we move into left side bicycle crunch. So just the left knees coming in for 25. And then we'll do right side for 25. And then we clam for 25. Okay? and then 20. So, yeah, it's gonna burn. <laughs> it's just, there's just no getting around that. <laughs> so let's just start. Here we go. Wrists are slightly ahead of the shoulders, not much. Fingers are spread. Okay, tuck the back toes under. Now I'm gonna count, if you're unable to keep up with my speed, don't worry about it, but just change the exercise when I change the exercise. Tuck your back toes under. Here we go. Press up to downward dog for one. Lower down. Two. Lower down, back to knees under hips. Three. And I'm letting my knees go all the way down to my ground. Four. You may need to reposition the feet as we go. Five. Six. See if we can get the heels closer to the ground. Seven with every rep. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Feet are in a straight line as well. Thirteen. So don't let the toes go out. The heels come in. Fourteen. Be strict with the form there. Fifteen. Last 10, nine, yes, you're gonna feel your quads. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Woo, all right, here we go. Legs are straight. Now it's just your left knee going to come up as you twist the right shoulder towards it. One, keep the left leg elevated. Two, exhale up. Three, four, five, six, 
Seven, support the head with your hands. Eight, don't push on the head though. Nine, neutral neck. 10, 11, 12, 13, flex that left foot. 14, so that foot is active. 15, 16, 17, 18, abs getting a little warm now, <laughs> 19, 20, last five, four, three, two, one. Right leg, ready, exhale as you lift, one, flex that right foot, two, keep that right leg off the ground if you can, three, Four, left shoulders coming off of your mat. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And again, if you're getting tired, if it's getting too much, just slow down and then change moves when I change moves. Last ten. Last five, four, three, two, one. Feet on the ground, hands still stay behind the head. Deep breath in, exhale, and curl everything center. One, two, three. Oh, our abs are not going to like us, are they? Four, yes, they will. <laughs> five, they'll like us when it's over. Six, breathe. Seven, if you need to modify, just have the legs come up. Eight, nine, okay, 10, always work arounds. 11, you got this. No matter where you are in your fitness journey, stick with me. Last 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, Four, three, two, one. Whew. Okay, crew, <laughs> now we're at 20. So starting that four point, wrist slightly ahead of shoulders, spread the fingers, knees under hips, tuck your toes under. Ready, press up to downward dog, one. Feet are in a straight line, take a look, two. Hip width apart with the feet and knees. Three, four, five, six, seven. And again, you're going to have to bring those knees in as you go. Eight, nine, ten. Halfway here. Last ten. Last three, two, one. On your back, left knee's driving in. Fingers light behind the head. Deep breath in, exhale, lift, one. Keep that left leg off the ground. Flex the foot. Breathe out when you lift up. This bothers your low back. I want you to bend your other leg. All right. Last four, three, two, one. Here we go, deep breath in, exhale, right knee in. One, flex the foot, two.
last five. One more. Whoo, abs are getting really toasty. Stretch out the arms if you have to. Here we go, clams, deep breath in. Exhale, roll everything up one or just roll the upper, or sorry, lower body up only. Three. For some reason my elbow's going into spasm, so I'm letting it just lie by my side. Here we go, last five, four, three, two, one. Nicely done, 15, here we go, downward dog, knees under hips, feet, pardon me, hands shoulder width apart, wrists slightly ahead of your shoulders, tuck your toes under and press the hips up, here we go, one. Last five, four, three, two, one. Whew. Okay, this workout is turning out longer than I wanted it to be, so we are just going to finish off with this round, okay? 15 reps, this is it. <laughs> Here we go. Left knee, I promise, this is the last one. Deep breath in, exhale, left knee for one. <laughs> Two, three, last five, but this is definitely a good little lab burn, isn't it? <laughs> Two more, last one. Here we go. Right leg, deep breath in. Exhale, curl, knee up. One, good. Flex that right foot. Two. Last four. Three. Two and one. Knees are bent, hands stay where they are. Deep breath into the nose and lift either the lower body or join me, upper and lower. Here we go. Final 15. One. Don't rock it, just use the abs for the motion. Last five. One more. Yes, we did it. Straighten these, the arms, straighten the legs, give the abs a stretch. Ah, great job at home. I'm proud of you. Whew. All right, let's bend the legs, extend your left leg straight up for hamstring stretch, and then pull the toes down towards your shin and get that length happening into the calf. So there you have it. This workout can easily be done on a day that you do another workout, okay? Maybe just get rid of the ab series because it ended up being a little longer than I wanted. So if you just want to do the foot part, this would be a great warm-up drill. This would also be fantastic to do after or do before a long walk, a run, a hike, 
Here he goes to the other leg. But because it's body weight, it is something that you could do every day and you could add with another workout. Pull those toes. Get into the abs a bit more, onto the forearms for me. Squeeze your glutes. If you feel any pinching in your low back, press the shoulders away from the earlobes and look up and hold. So thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. I would love to know what you thought. Leave a comment down below. Thumbs up if you like the workouts. And if you didn't already, hey, subscribe to the channel. We drop workouts twice a week, and I'd love to keep working with you. And if you're looking for a structured workout, something that gets sent to you on a daily basis, I have a free 21-day fitness program for women over the age of 40 on my website. Head down to the description below this video to check it out. And lift up. And you did it. Hey, thanks for joining me. I'm sorry we went a little long, but trust me, your abs will thank me for it in the end. Have yourself a great rest of your day, and we will see you next workout. Good job.